Hey kids, Tavia Rider here. I have a tutorial on how to build the control circuit for my cheap blaze grinder. It's cheap, so I used as few of these resources as I could. Uh, of course, only two sticky pistons. You also need 17 random blocks, four redstone torches, 30 redstone, and I think the most expensive part is these 17 redstone repeaters. They're kind of a pain to make. You need a lot of ingredients. Uh, so if you can do better than 17 redstone repeaters, let me know. Post a reply. Maybe it can be optimized beyond what I'm showing you here today, but 17 is the best I've seen so far. Uh, I'm also going to be using my wool coloring system for this. Red wool underlines an input line, green is for a circuit, and blue is for output. You don't have to do this, but I think it makes it clearer. Uh, you don't need it to be on wool or anything like that. Any kind of blocks will do for the rest of this. So we're going to build this on a mock-up. This is the bottom portion of my cheap blaze grinder. You, it already has the two sticky pistons in place. This is the separator, and then this is the crusher. And we're going to start out opposite the crusher, and we're going to start right below the pressure plate. And we're going to dig down beneath that. And this is our one and only input line. And we bring that out two blocks and then up. And all we have to do is spiral it up towards the separator piston. Now since we're hooking it directly up, we simply change it from red over to blue and throw a redstone down on top of it all. That's it for the separator piston. Now to get the timing circuit for the crusher piston, that's where most of our work is going to be. We bring the input line around here, and starting right here, we're going to build a monostable circuit. A monostable circuit will take the steady input coming in from the pressure plate and turn it into a short pulse. And the length of that pulse is controlled by the redstone repeaters that go in the middle here. We threw down redstone on top and then a torch right there and then the redstone repeaters go in here and in this case we want three redstone repeaters all of them on their maximum delay and then the final piece is a torch on the end here we'll underline that with blue because that's the output and there's our monostable circuit now the next component is going to be an RS NOR latch. That's part of a pulse lengthener. And so the output of this becomes the input to the pulse lengthener. And first, the RS NOR latch. This is going to be a simple one with just two torches fighting for, fighting over which one gets to stay lit. So the torches go on these two blocks that are in this loop here. And then we put some redstone around there. And then in this design, we want to change the timing of it a little bit, so we put two more redstone repeaters in here on their maximum delays, and then redstone to complete the RS NOR latch. Okay, next up, to turn this into a pulse lengthener, we need to once again connect this uh, torch to the other one. And this is where we're going to use most of our redstone repeaters. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then four across, and then three this way. So the redstone repeaters, all of these maximum delay, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we need a piece of redstone to turn the corner. One, two more here, and then three here at the end. Now this doesn't have to be any particular shape. If the space that you have to fit this into is different, go ahead and route this differently. I had to do that in my survival world, or my hardcore world. Um, and now, we have to do something a little bit tricky. We want this output from all of these repeaters to go two different ways. So first we're going to put a block here and then connect it directly to this torch on the RS NOR latch. Now because this block is right up against the redstone repeater, the block will be powered and then the redstone will be able to pull the rest of the power out. Now we're also going to have to separate this out and connect it into our crusher piston. So what we're going to do here is throw up four green wool, and this is effectively going to be an ore gate. We throw down some redstone on top, and because this block is on top of the torch from the RS NOR latch, the signal is combined right here. If it's coming up from this block, or if the torch is lit, then this will be powered. And then we have to do one more thing, we have to put in a redstone repeater. This is the only one that's not on its maximum delay. This is going to smooth out the output from this OR gate a little bit. And then we simply carry that out, the final output to our piston. And that's it. That's our entire circuit. So 
make sure I didn't do anything wrong, let's test it by dropping a blaze in here. And we'll see, okay, the upper piston worked, the lower piston worked. You can see the pulse lengthener doing its job. This piston didn't retract at all, so that's good. And it pulled back. Okay, let's see if our blaze is okay. He's one, he should be one hit point away from dying. He survived it, so one punch and it worked. Okay, that's it. That is our control circuit. Now, um, one person by the handle Mohawk Guai pointed out a, a different version of this that I thought is worth talking about. If you replace that stone pressure plate with a wooden pressure plate, then it will respond to items on the pressure plate as well. So you can do things like drop any item, in this case I'm using just some redstone, and you drop it on there before it's primed, and so you can use the redstone as your primer, rather than having to have a blaze drop down in first. Also, when there's a large number of blazes in here, you can kill them with a a potion and then all of their drops and their XP orbs will sit on the pressure plate and then you can come down here and pick them up and that way only once you've picked them up and gotten safely away will any more blazes drop down on top of that pressure plate. So I've never had a problem with the blazes getting angry or trying to attack me through this small gap but this is a different design that may be useful to you. All credit goes to Mohawk Y for coming up with this. There is one minor drawback to this. Uh, you can get in a situation where you have multiple pulses going around through the pulse lengthener and you'll end up with this piston extending and retracting over and over again. I, as far as I can tell that can only happen when you have this pressure plate in there or if you get some weird other type of mob into the grinder. So that's something to watch out for. That's it. Uh, as I said, if you can come up with a better version, post it. I'll give you full credit. I would love to see people optimizing this. Um, if you have any questions about how this works, or if you want to know more about the redstone, post your questions here. Thanks for watching.